Welcome to Godseeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message? Trajectory Reset. There is a very real focus within Christianity on bringing God's heavenly kingdom to earth. The grand overview goes like this. Christianity, with its roots in Judaism, is built on a premise that God created the universe and humanity, and that all of history is an account of the story of the relationship of God with humanity, which is running a course that will one day be complete. The story begins with God's creation of humanity as an act of the true love essence He is. He created all people from this love in order to have fellowship with us. He has need of nothing. He is sufficient unto himself. But he wanted us to live in the shelter of his perfect love, in his care forever, because this love that he is naturally finds an outlet. Of course, in our imperfection, early humanity made some decisions which demonstrated they would rather be in charge of themselves rather than trusting God for his care. God honored that decision. The relationship with God was broken, but he was still there, present and providing in his love. Only it was different. It was not as close as before or as intimate, and instead of living in a perfected creation where there was only good, now everyone would also be impacted by evil. We would do harm to one another. We would encounter harm, and there would be hardship illness, and death. All-knowing God knew humanity would never be able to mend the relationship with him in the way it needed to be done. He had known this since the beginning. So since the beginning, he had had a plan to offer each one the opportunity to reunite with him forever. Jesus. Jesus was born, lived, and died in a manner which opened the door for each one who chooses to have that relationship with God again, which he has always wanted for us. The relationship begins now, but lasts beyond death through eternity. And in that forever place, which is our true home, he would wipe away the tears from the suffering which has been, and there would only be good again. For now, once people individually make a free will choice to believe in God, and let him be king of their lives. They become part of his eternal kingdom already now. It's a strange sort of in-between living, where obviously here does not become the perfect goodness and joy of heaven, but where God's presence is here in the midst, and he works through his followers to bring more of his goodness on earth now as in heaven. This includes kindness and gentleness, but also added firmness and perseverance where required in order to help bring justice, especially to the suffering and the voiceless, comfort to the sorrowing, and help to those otherwise in need. This job to usher in God's kingdom on earth as in heaven now is supposed to mean goodness and better living for all. More of God's intended way with each other here now, more sincere compassion and care for one another, more relational peace and joy. Here during this temporary life, perfection in relationships will never be perfectly attained, but we strive for it, relationally, because that's what God's original commandments to his people were all about, how we are to treat one another for love of God. When we listen for God's instructions as his subjects and work to treat each other the way he leads, This naturally results in an expansion of God's kingdom. When people experience God's love given in the way he leads, their hearts melt, and they long for restored relationship with him as well. I used to think bringing God's kingdom more to earth meant changing all the laws so that the laws of my country match the laws of God. I loved and loved God so much. This would honor him, right? I had read, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, in Psalm 33, verse 12. I believed it. I still do. 
But I think in my earlier emphasis on working so hard for laws to be changed, I missed the main Jesus-focused point. I still vote. I still am active working on what to me seems a more God-honoring society. But I no longer believe that how the establishment of laws proceeds, ruins, or enables God's kingdom to come. It can't be so. God has shown us through Jesus that his way is different and greater than this. The culture Jesus modeled, the culture of the kingdom of God, was unique in that Jesus treated people the way which is God's will, regardless of governmental structures. He didn't care. Jesus didn't worry about changing who was in charge or what they ordered. He went about his business as the ambassador for the kingdom of God, representing God's culture regardless. Rome was in power over the Jews when Jesus was born. Rome was still in power 33 years later when he was crucified. The Jewish leadership was focused on the minutiae of adhering to a web of hundreds of laws that had been built through the centuries of trying to interpret what God wanted. Jesus demonstrated repeatedly that he had come not to abolish this law or the law focus of the society, but to fulfill it and therewith to usher in the possibility of the true culture of the kingdom of God there in the midst of everything less. Each person choosing whether to believe and work to imitate him, each person then becoming a member of his new society within society. Jesus fulfilled the law by living according to its broader meaning, not focused on every little detail of the shoulds and should nots, but why a particular instruction from God was there. If a person were to just do what the law said, but did it with no love in their hearts for God or for fellow people, then the obedience to the law was as if worthless. What mattered to God was the heart, the attitude, the underlying motivation within a person. God is looking for sincerity. Therefore, to make my main focus, making sure the written laws match what I think honors God, doesn't make sense. The main focus has to be living in a way and how I treat the others around me that more and more mirrors how he wants them treated, so that in a way only God can know. These others experience God in a way that causes them to want to follow him as well. This does not require laws a particular way, regardless of my preference. It requires a listening heart on my part, which puts his work for me with people first and trusts him to move on their hearts in the way each one needs through it. Peace and joy, love and patience, gifts in every day through the simple rhythm of walking out his will for him with one another. This is the emphasis of bringing his kingdom to earth now for his effect, his way. Blessed life. Use the song, Put Your Hand on Me, as your prayer while you rejoice in the freedom to just follow where God leads and as he works through you to expand his kingdom in a multiplicity of hearts. And as he does, our world will change for the better now through forever. Listen more than once until the song and its message become yours. You can find Put Your Hand on Me on my YouTube channel. Just search under my name, Elizabeth Fulgaro. It is also carried on various streaming surfaces and is available on CD. Let's finish with a scripture, a verse from the Bible. First Samuel Chapter 16, verse 7. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Thank you for joining in. Godseeker is sponsored by Eagle's Nest Foundation. Until next time, this is Elizabeth Fulgaro. I am praying for you. Listen to the song, Put Your Hand on Me and keep seeking God.